Well, hey, y'all, and welcome to the Hillbilly Chicken Ranch. I am Susan, your hostess. Welcome in to the month of April. I'm so excited because we have just completed Easter weekend, and my husband and I celebrated 23 years of marriage this year. So we're really excited about that. We've got two more years before we can celebrate our silver wedding anniversary. That will be exciting as well. And our special guest today is supposed to be Lou Ann with Blackberry Rock Homestead and Lou Ann's Kitchen. I hope that she remembers. I have sent her emails and several uh, messages different in different places to try to get her attention on that. So hopefully she will see that. And if she doesn't come, we'll just wing it. We may bring up another guest if uh, she does not show up. So we never know. Sometimes we get busy. We forget. I know I forgot Jamie's uh, live one week and I was really late getting there, but she held the ground and she continued on with that. And I was super, super excited to be a part of Jamie's uh, Country Living's live as well. If you missed last week's live, you need to go back and watch it because we had Kevin Kay on there from Tuber Chat, and we also had Heather with Milk and Honey Heritage Farms, and they are wonderful, wonderful channels to get involved in. Hey, hello, Hossel. Welcome in. H-O-S-S-S-L. I'm going to go ahead and look up your channel really quick. Um, let me see. Let me get over here to my live because I, somehow I was on um, Jamie's live. So hustle. I'm going to get you on here. I'm going to go ahead and check out your video. Get you on my playlist as a new channel. That way I can find you easier. Okay, it won't let you log in, Luann, so I'm going to drop your link. This is for Luann only, folks. And once she pops up, I'll delete that link. Uh, sometimes the links don't work. It's just the way it is. Um, but we know that we can always dr drop that link. Hello, Gail with Gail Southern Living. She is a member channel. I'm so excited to be friends with this lady here. She has Gail Southern Living. She has actually three, three channels, I believe. One of them is called Simply Gail. Um, and then she has Broken Hearts Ministry Gail, which is really taking off now. We're excited for her. It is a ministry that she and her mother has started to help the homeless in their community. Let's see. I'm waiting on Luann. Let me get her name down here on my list so I don't forget to go check out her channel later on. Um, I'm going to go ahead and read off all of last week's visitors and our members list. I get excited about the members list, y'all. So last week we had Garden State Gardener, Grow Big TV, Gail Southern Living, PJ. Homestead Adventures, Rushing Wind Mountain, uh, Simply Vigo, <clears throat> Jaden0428, Black Guns and Gardens, My Alabama Farm Life, Scratch and Pete, Ann Haynes, Christy Betts, Scotty Too Hotty, Hashtag MTP, McKay235, Wilma to you one Canadian Family Life, Jamie's Country Living, Life in the Piedmont, um, D's Garden Adventures, Language of Horses, Marketplace Boutique, Our Treasured Home, Backyard Trucker, Beverly Moffitt, Christy, uh, Chris Shirley Babies, Chris Sherry Babies, Homestead Tessie was here, Chris Welton, Corner Clubhouse Cobalt, Alfonso Simmental, uh, Lisa J. Stocks, Creative Beauty Butterfly, Antoinette Depoit, The Stock Explorer, and 49 more. 
those were our guests last week. We had a long list of guests. Well, hello, uh, Miss Kathleen from My Alabama Farm Life. Let me get you on my list. And I see Lu Luann is coming up in the basement. Our current channel members, and if y'all notice, we also dropped some memberships this morning, some free memberships. We do not choose those. Um, they are randomly picked by YouTube. Awesome, Hassel. You came over from Mark's, I uh, say Corner Clubhouse's Mark, Mark's channel. I had to think. <laughs> Well, hello, Miss Luann. Can you hear me? Hello. I hope you can hear me. I can't hear myself. <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited that you're here with me today. I'm going to go, go ahead and read through our current channel members, and then we'll get into our conversations. That'll give you a chance to settle down. I'm going to go ahead and read through our you got YouTube running in the background somewhere. Okay. That'll give you a chance to settle down. I'm going to go. Okay. Oh, <laughs> it happens to the best of us. Uh, current channel members are Lucretia. Ah, Lucretia. I'm having issues. I'm sorry. Uh, I can't hear you, Susan. Okay. I can see you, but I can't hear you. I know my sound so. is on. Let me double check. Everybody out there in the audience, can you hear me? Hold on a second. Yeah, you might have me muted. I'm Hold up on, on a second. I think I know what my boo boo is. Okay. Hey, awkward quilter GA, welcome in. Okay, current members are Lucretia TV. Triple Threat, Firearms and Defense, Incorporated, McKay 235, Catadin Mountain Mama Homestead, Jamie's Country Living, Storyteller Donnie, Creative Beauty Butterfly, KP Heathen, Gail's Southern Living, Corner Clubhouse Cobalt, The Bud Files, Helena M, Blackberry Rock Homestead, Sheila Gage, Grow Big mm. TV, Maritza's Yarn and Crafts, Garden State So-and-So, Aerial Viking Venture and Victuals, Marketplace Boutique, Team Jesus Ministers, Smoky Mountain Blessed, Life in the Piedmont, Theresa, Theresa Jukowitz, Yorktown, P&J Homestead, Barb's Country Home, Simply Jan Homestead. And we gifted out five of those memberships this morning. If you are receiving a gifted membership, uh, I can't even hear myself. You can, um, you get the benefit of being able to see what all we do on our channel for our members. Uh, I am experimenting with doing a live watch list for my channel members. That doesn't mean that you'll get watched every week for, a complete live, but you will um, have a opportunity to receive a few extra watch hours with that. And I do share my member, my channel members out on my community tab. Uh, I may share them out as a group in a uh, community tab post, or I may sh share out a video. So you never know what you're going to get with the Hillbilly Chicken Ranch. Hey, welcome in, Alfonso. We're so glad that you're here. Um, I do have a week in April that I do not have a special guest. So if you're interested in becoming a special guest on my channel, you go to the hillbilly chicken ranch at gmail.com and email me and just put in the, in the uh, title special guest and I'll get you plugged into a date that is open. We'll talk about what dates are available to you. There we go. Yay. So we'll talk about Yay. what dates are, we'll talk about what dates are open to you if you want to be a special guest on my lives. Hey Troy Sutton, welcome in. We're starting to get a few people in the house today, Miss Luann. 
Lou Ann, is, Lou Ann has Blackberry Rock Homestead, and she also has Lou Ann's Kitchen. They're two wonderful, wonderful channels. I want y'all to go check them out if you're not already um, friending Miss Lou Ann on either of those channels. You need to be her friend because she's going to teach you all kinds of things about gardening and cooking and all the good stuff. Um, that we homesteaders enjoy so, so much. She's a wealth of knowledge and she is a fantastic cook and canner. Uh, a little bit of a rebel canner. I've seen a few rebel canning videos that she's put out there and I just absolutely love Miss Luann. Hey there. Let's see. Oh, Miss Luann is doing some open collaborations. So you want to talk about those? Uh, yes, on Blackberry Rock Homestead, I got store to garden grow anything to get that you grab from the store. Um, let's see if we can grow it. Um, the last time I checked, uh, all my strawberries that I tried to start, I did have something coming up in the, in the pot, but not a hundred percent sure if it's strawberries. I've never grown strawberries before. Um. I also have slow cooker palooza, which anything you could cook in a slow cooker, which there are tons of things. Um, and then back of the label recipes and which, you know, you get a product and try the back of whatever recipe that's on the back of it. So I think yeah, that's Yeah, and you have, the, you have the uh, gelatin pudding. Oh, yeah, the gelatin pudding recipes as well. So... And that's anything that you could cook with gelatin or pudding. So, awesome. Uh, yeah, I had. A, I'm trying to get my com comments to come back up, and I was still on somebody else's page <laughs> on my YouTube. I have to. I have to mute my phone because I get text messages th throughout the day, and so I mute my phone when I'm doing lives or videos, folks. So I don't have those interruptions, but. It's a wonderful. Oh, I understand that. I get it. It's a wonderful tool to have. Mountain Grandma, Miss Tammy's in the house. Good morning. Welcome in. Welcome in. If y'all don't mind, please share this out. Uh, please hit those thumbs up, and please chat to your heart's content. The keyword on my channel is hillbilly, and if you drop that in the chat nightbox will go find your links and drop those links so that you can connect and grow we're all about connecting with what with one another on this channel so y'all make sure that you're doing that throughout this live me and miss lou ann are talking heads this morning we're going to be chatting about gardening and different things uh, i've actually got some recipe ideas for that that gelatin pudding collaboration i've just got to get the ingredients together to do it i'm really excited about all these open collaborations hey david Corey with crop yeah me too i know i need to get another gelatin or pudding recipe up so go uh, through some of my recipes in my cookbooks yeah and, which and i did find something i watched your video the other day uh, what you thrift find and I had gotten this oh wow so Pretty it nice. has the recipes from 1896 I do believe from that cookbook and I'm like well I got one of those cookbooks I know I do and I I got it at a thrift store too I think I only paid a quarter for it so well you got a better deal than I did I think I paid $2.99 for it but it's well worth every penny uh, yeah. If y'all can get your hands on that, it's Fanny, Fanny Farmer Cookbook, and it does have recipes that are over 100 years old in there. They are yep. all scratch recipes that I saw, and it is a fantastic cookbook. We might need to do a Fanny Farmer collaboration, me and you, you Miss Luann. <laughs> oh, that would be great. I know there. I was looking at recipes in there yesterday, last night, and there was a Lady Fingers Um recipe because you can't get them here in the stores here locally but i've heard of them i'm like i like to try that so yeah 
so we'll we'll talk about that in email or on instagram um yeah. i want to welcome in let's see uh sister winnie the bud files and haynes and canadian family life miss tiffany we're so glad that y'all are here we are talking with Miss Luann from Blackberry Rock Homestead and Luann's Kitchen. Luann has been around YouTube for a while, and we're trying to get her to grow, grow, grow. Yes, been, been around a long time. I know I was thinking the other day, as many people, subscribers that have YouTube has dropped off or have not, you know, I probably would have over a thousand if, you know. Yeah, it is what it is. So we're going to push today. If you have not uh, met Miss Luann or you're not connected with her, please go over to her channel and get connected. All you have to do is watch three to five minutes of a video, leave a meaningful comment, hit that like button, hit that su subscribe button, that little bell at the top, and you'll get all of her content coming through that you can go and check out and enjoy. She is a delightful lunch. Delightful, delightful lady. I was going to say young lady, but we're not young anymore. Neither one of us. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> young at heart, <laughs> maybe, not but, not, young. but not physically. <laughs> no. Um, gardening. Let's talk yes. about gardening. Um, I try to do garden each year. I, I expand. <laughs> I shouldn't, but I do it anyway. <laughs> So, it's kind of hard not to plant those little seeds. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, it is. It is so hard. So I know I covered everything up last night in the greenhouse. My greenhouse is not heated. So I know last night we got down in the 30s. This morning woke up. It was in the 30s. And I know we're supposed to have another hard freeze Friday night. So I wish here Missouri weather would straighten up and either be you know, warm or whatever. So where I can plant more. I see P and J's at Homestead Adventures are stuck in on us. Welcome in. Yep. Yeah. But I, I, I have garden garden for a long time. So I haven't gotten a greenhouse yet. We had a one of those little plastic greenhouses that you could set up on your front porch and it never really did any good for me. I got, I sold it in a yard sale y'all years and years ago, but we have been collecting windows um, and we're going to build a, an old window greenhouse. My husband has actually put a built the frame, you know, the foundation right. frame for it. So he likes to build things. So I'm thinking it's going to get done. I've got a lot of painting and, I'm going to be doing a lot of glazing on windows. If you've ever that used, is oh, awesome. if you've ever I used know our, our, my greenhouse was gifted to me. So no, that was wonderful. And I, we recently looked, uh, well, I should say one of our friends bought a little greenhouse from one of the builders around here. They wanted $6,000 for a yes. eight by 10 or an eight by 12 greenhouse. Yeah. Mine is going to be 10 by 10. So I'll have plenty of space to, to put yeah. plants on either side. We are actually, we actually had a wood burning stove gifted to us. So my husband's going to include the wood burning stove in the greenhouse. So I can be out there filming in the wintertime in my greenhouse. I'm so, so excited. Uh, yeah, we're gonna I, I was going to do this live in the greenhouse, but it's a little windy today. And it's really cold outside, so I'm like, no, let's do it in the in the house. So, yeah, uh, I'm going to be doing, like I said, I'm going to be glazing windows uh, and using those little glassier points that you got to put in to make sure the glass is all secure because these are very old windows, wood windows, and they all need to be scraped and painted. Now, a lot of places will not let you build with those because of lead. But huh. we're going to build one anyway. <laughs> I want a greenhouse. Oh, yeah. This is the cheap way for us. Most of the windows were free and gifted to us. So we're super, super excited about that. And P&J's Homestead Adventure just subbed to you, Luann. So super, 
Woohoo! We're glad about that. Hey, McKay, welcome yes. in. Y'all don't forget to use the word uh, hillbilly in the chat so that you can have your links dropped. I am um, planting. I've been direct sow planting. Um, I got a new asparagus bed that I'm starting from seed. I'm hoping I get some asparagus out of it in about two years because it takes that long for the seeds to make the root stock and all that. Um, yeah, I know my asparagus are up, so hopefully this cold snap won't, you know, knock them back down again. So, yeah, uh, we got one more cold snap coming our way, and I think that's going to be the end of it. I think April 10th is actually the last frost date for us so we've got one more coming um it did get down i think in the 30s last night but i didn't have my heat on we just threw a blanket over us because i turned on my air conditioner yesterday with all that stormy weather coming through hey rita's roost welcome in yeah hubby hubby was very nervous with the stormy weather when it came through here but i know north of us um up there close to where Jan lives, it got, there was a EF zero tornado somewhere up in there that touched down. So. Well, I just prayed for everybody because I know North of us, um, they were getting tornadoes and stuff. And I don't know if we got anything South of us, but here we just got a little bit of wind and rain, which I was thankful for. Yeah. Um, so I was glad that, and it, they had a tornado watch out until it was at first two or 3 a.m. And then they knocked it back to 9 p.m. So last night at, after nine, we could sleep without worrying about sleeping through a tornado. As right. y'all know, we live in a double wide mobile home. So it's not the safest structure when you have severe weather like that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I agree with that. Totally. <coughs> I know my. I had an uncle that lived in a trailer house and he had the roof blown out when he was in bed. So. Yeah, it, it can be bad, but you know, I looked outside, we didn't have any limbs down or anything, which was unusual. Hey, Christy Betts, welcome in. Well, and we didn't have no limbs down either. I know there's, um, from a previous storm, there's a tree out there, uh, close to one of, part of my garden that I want to expand and plant my hollyhocks up. Well, I can't do it because there's a big old limb hang, just hanging there. Uh, so I got, I wish they would, that limb would come down, but. Yeah. I want to welcome in Rita's roost. Also, I need to get over and visit Miss Rita a little bit more often. I've been slacking here lately running watch later lists, uh, takes up a lot of time. So, yeah. you know, we all do this and uh, sometimes we just can't get to everybody, but it doesn't mean we don't love your channel anyway. <laughs> Agreed. Agreed. Uh, there are some really great channels that has come through my lives. Uh, some of them have moved on and I am so glad that I got to meet them. And I try to go back every once in a while. One of the good things about um, studio for YouTube is you can go back through all the channels that have friended you and you can right. see where they're at and you can go click on that and go directly to their channel. So what I've been doing is occasionally I'm going to go through and I'm going to pull some channels to shout out and try to go watch a little bit of their videos when I have free time and I don't have a lot of free time. Y'all I am oh, a busy, busy that. person. I, I get not having free time. So, yeah, um, we have open collaborations that are dropping in our chat as well. Y'all write those names down. Go check out those collaborations. There's some really great ones for you to get involved in. Um, I know uh, Gail's got several. Heather has several. Um, that's Milk and Honey Heritage Farms or Her Heritage Homestead, or Farms. I think it's Farms. Um, Miss Luann has several. I have several. And um, our treasured home has started one. It's a hashtag chicken collab 
I'm trying to get more information on it before I put something out because chicken could be chickens in the yard or chicken in a pot. I don't know what she's, you know, what she's wanting. I think it's chicken, chicken in the pot because I think it was opened up last year as well, but she didn't have a hashtag is just, you know, make something with using chicken. So, well, I got lots and lots of chicken in the freezer. <laughs> oh, I, I have lots and lots of rabbit <clears throat> that will soon be going to the freezer, which you can interchange with chicken. So, yeah, uh, rabbit is actually very good and healthy for you but it's a leaner meat so you have to you have to amend some fats somewhere in your diet to kind of offset the leanness of that meat uh, oh, the the rabbits we sent to the freezer camp over the weekend they were fat they had rolls of just fat in there so well that's good my the rabbits oh, yeah. that we that we had done freezer camp with in the past were always really lean and we didn't know why because they were eating constantly um, yeah. but it was yeah. lots of, lots of fun Any chicken dish. Okay. Thank you, Gail. So I've got a whole chicken in there. I could do some chicken and dumplings or chicken and dress. I don't know. We'll find something, something oh, yeah. good. Oh, let's see. What else have I got planted in the garden? I'm doing com companion planting this year. Um, last year we had squash bugs just tear our squash all to pieces. And I told my husband, I said, it's because we didn't companion plant. So this year, and we also have very sandy soil here, so we're going to get all kinds of bugs. Um, so this year we are companion planting everything that we're putting in. My husband's actually expanding the garden and I'm hoping we get it all planted because he's got grandiose plans for us. Yeah, pine cones are really good for rabbits. Yeah. It gives them something to play with and they love it and it cleans their teeth. Uh, it's full of vitamin C, so it's really, really good for them. We used to give ours uh, lots of pine cones because we had them all over the place on our road. Um, they like we things to play with. Here, a yeah. lot of cedar. Yeah, they like a lot things. Of rocks. They like to they like to chew and they like they like to play with things while they're eating. So that was a lot of fun for us when we raised them. But it was so hot here, and we didn't have a, a uh, place that we could keep them in the shade. Uh, so we felt so bad for them. And I was constantly taking out ice bottles for them. Yeah, yeah. Well, my our rabbit. Well, my rabbits are daughter was raising them as pets so now they're my rabbits so i think there's maybe one or two left that she had here so yeah and, and they I've multi had give me rabbits too so yeah and they multiply quickly we had at one time yes. i think about 20 or 30 rabbits yeah um, yeah yeah the pine the pine cones are really good for them uh the purple dead nettle that's out in the yard the weed uh and dandelions the flowers are really good for helping their milk come in when they they go to birth uh right. so we give that to them as well i watched kathleen's video i think it was this morning or yesterday i can't remember i think it was um, yesterday and she was showing her rabbits and she was picking the different weeds and things and um i learned some things from her that I didn't know that I had out in my yard. I knew about the plantain leaves. Uh, you can feed them plantain leaves, you know, that grow right. in your yard. We all hate those little weeds, but they love them. And there's so many good benefits for them and for us with a lot of these things that we grow in our yard and we don't even realize it. Yeah. I know you could chew up the plantain leaves if you have, I think it was plantain. There was something I had a sore and um, the first responder came and chewed it. So we'll here, chew this up. And then she made like a paste using your saliva and stuff and put it on the wound and it helped it. Yeah. So, you can put it on. If you ever get stung by wasp or stings, you want to go grab that. That's it what up. it was. It was a bee yeah. sting because I'm allergic to uh, red wasps. Yeah. You chew it and then you put it on there like a poultice. 
Yeah. And it draws out all that poison from the, the sting. So yeah, that's very, very good. My grandmother was a medicinal person. Um, I called her the medicine woman of our family. She wanted to take me out in the woods and show me every root and everything. As a child, she had picked me and she wanted me to learn all this. Of course, I wasn't a bit interested then. I wish I had paid more attention, but I do remember her chewing on willow bark for a toothbrush and a few other things that she used was all natural. And she had almost all her teeth at 90. She had three gray wow. hairs at 90. Her hair was down past her feet. Um, I pulled out a picture the other day because uh, Tina at Life in the Piedmont reminds me of my dad's family. Their, her mannerisms, her looks, her hands all remind me of my dad's family. So I sent her over some pictures and I was telling her, you know, the resemblance was just uncanny. Um, and my, anyway, my grandmother lived to, into her 90s and she had this long black hair. She coiled up in a bun and she only had about three gray hairs when she passed away. And she wow. swore that it was because she washed her hair with rainwater. Wow. But you never know what it might be that is genetic that's passed down to you. Scratch and Pete, welcome in. Welcome in. So I'm taking I more. Remember, I remember one of my grandmas, I had a wart and she said, well, put a potato peel and put a bandaid on it. And that would, and it worked. So but well, I, I was around, I was around them, but not, you know, really close by both of my grandparents, but both my grandparents had big gardens and they canned. So always I always had uh, fresh tomatoes. I remember on one of my sides. aunts. I remember one of my aunts. I had a wart on my finger and it wouldn't go away. It was one of those seeded warts. Have you ever seen those? Yeah. And she took she took a red thread, she tied it around there, and she told me to go out and bury it out in the yard. And the next morning that thing was gone off my hand, and I was super, super amazed. I don't know if she put something on it during the night to make it disappear, but the wart was gone the next day. And I was I was super, super amazed by that knowledge. Yeah. Um so I'm I know we're flipping around on the subjects here, but <clears throat> I've companion planted onions this year. Uh, I've never had any luck with my onions. I've planted them separate before. Get beautiful green stalks out of them, but I don't get any onions. So this year I decided I'm going to companion plant uh, three varieties and I've still got red onions and I think I still got some yellow or white onions. I need to get them planted. So I, I keep telling my husband, hey, you need to get my garden tilled so I can get this stuff in the ground. Um, so carrots are, are great companions with onions. Um, spinach, yes. lettuce. I'm trying to remember what all I planted out there. Leeks. And there's something, a deal, are all really good. There's others, of course, but those are all real good to plant with your onions. And with my asparagus, I planted beets. Beets are a real good companion plant with asparagus. Um, I've got lots and lots of flowers I'm planting this year because our neighbor has beehives. We want to give them plenty of things that they can collect their pollen from. And they had some really good honey last year. We had cotton fields all around us, and they had a lot of cotton pollen in that and it was really, really good honey. Um, let's see, what else have I got? I planted my red potatoes. I've got my, um, my ooh, sweet potatoes. <laughs> my sweet potatoes chit it, and I got them sitting in jars, of, over jars of water to kind of root. Um, I took all their seed, you know, you know, where the, Right. You know what I'm talking about. The eyes. Yeah. Yeah. I got two sweet potatoes in jars. One of them's really rooted. The other one's, I, I think I'm going to have to pitch it. It's not rooting. It's, it looks like it's rightening. So. So anyway, I had a bunch of them left over from last year 
and I wanted to get them out of the pantry and get them into the garden because this way I don't have to purchase my potatoes, hopefully, because we don't eat a lot of potatoes, but we do eat a few. Yeah. Hello, Milk and Honey Heritage Farms. Welcome in. That's Miss Heather. Hello, Heather. Get you on my list. <laughs> uh, and then we went to the Amish community and they had tomato plants. So we bought six. They had six, seven plants out there. We bought six of them. I didn't really want the cherry tomatoes as much because I, I'm looking at canning. Uh, they had purple heritage or purple heirloom tomatoes and pink heirloom tomatoes. I have no idea what the variety is, but I'm assuming the purple or the Cherokee purples. Uh, the pinks, I'm not sure if it's, you know, which one it is. It could be an Arkansas Traveler. It could be a number of different tomatoes. Right. Thank you for coming in, uh, Alfonso. You have fun out there on your trails. He walks every day, y'all. He's amazing. That's good. I know we have an Amish community where my mom lives, but they they have an auction. They don't have like a store to go to, um, but there's an auction. A lot of the people around here buy their tomato plants and stuff like that. You know, to resell. Some of them resell, and some of them just do it for their garden, for their own use. Right. Well, these tomato plants are are pretty good size. They were about at least a foot above the pot. And wow. they only wanted a dollar a piece. That's cheap. That is awesome because you go and look at the bonnie plants in the store and bonnie plants has gotten ridiculously high. They're $6 a plant. Uh, oh, I noticed that. I noticed that yeah, the other day I, when I, I said, went. I said, that's price gouging because you can buy a pack of seeds for under three bucks. Right. You know, right. So that's really price gouging. Very price gouging. Jamie's at it's with everything Lake. else too. So, yeah. So I'm hoping to go. But they also had cabbage, but they had a tray of cabbage for fifteen dollars, or you could buy the plugs for forty cents a piece. And right. I've never had any luck with cabbage either. So I told my husband, I said, I don't know about doing the cabbage or not, um, but that would be something I would think about. Hey, Corner Clubhouse Cobalt. Well, I had luck with cabbage until the bugs hit yet last year. I, I'm going to try to make, um, do a floating row cover over it to see if I can get them better, bigger. So, right. Uh, we bought a lot of cabbage last year from the Amish community, and um, I made sauerkraut with it for the first time. And I'm telling you what. You'll never go back to store-bought sauerkraut ever oh, again. It I is. agree. I agree. I remember my grandma making sauerkraut. I think she canned it too, but. Yeah, I did can it afterwards. Um, but you, you're building up all that good bacteria and stuff. So you don't pressure can it. You water bath can it. Right. So you don't kill off all that good bacteria. And it is just so, so good. My husband and I are really enjoying it. I am going to cut it a little smaller the next time around. I wish I had one of those cabbage boards, you know, where you can just. Yeah, the shredders. Yeah. Uh, I told him, I said, maybe you need to make me one. <laughs> <laughs> because the antique ones are really, really high. Um, but homemade sauerkraut was just so, so good. And it's gut healthy. And right. so I have a jar of it in the refrigerator now. And we just take some out at dinner time and put it on our plate doesn't really matter what we're eating we're going to eat that along with whatever um, right so it's really really a delicious addition of course i have to watch my vitamin k vegetables like cabbage and spinach and the greens and stuff like that i have to really watch that because of the clotting disorder but i take this medication called serapeptase i take it five days a week and then i go off of it on the weekends and it thins my blood naturally. And then I can eat my cabbage and my good stuff. <laughs> I told my doctor, I said, I'm going to get figure out how I'm going to be able to eat this stuff. Cause I absolutely love it. Right. Uh, 
and I'm always looking for new recipes, y'all. So if you get a recipe that you like, e email it to me or send it in the mail. I would love to get your recipes and do them as a video. <laughs> Joe, welcome in, Joe. Big grow, grow big TV. This Polish guy agrees. Grow your cabbage. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody had a question about what's our favorite vegetable. I don't remember who it was. I've seen it. I'm sorry. I missed that. My favorite vegetable of all vegetables is got to be okra. I Mine love is tomatoes. I love Hands down. <laughs> I love fried okra. Ooh, I yeah. Eat, I can eat fried okra like popcorn, y'all. <laughs> Uh, tomatoes, me too. me too. Tomatoes are definitely a second because I love fried green tomatoes. I love tomatoes off the vine. I love me a good old mater sandwich. I love canned tomatoes, salsa, and sauces, and you name it. I love my yeah. tomatoes. Tomatoes and onions are my my top two veggies. I love okra too, but. I know I've only had one good year with okra and it was just off one plant and it just, I was giving it away to lots of people. So Gail has a question for you, Luann, are you growing uh, anything new this year? Yes. I'm growing a couple new varieties of tomatoes for sure. And more flowers, uh, black eyes, Susan's and hollyhocks that are different to me. I'm going to try to separate them. Uh, the hollyhocks, which was a variety. I'm going to try to separate the colors and see if I can um, save some seed from there. So awesome. Awesome. And of I'm, course new peppers as well. So yeah, I've got broccoli also uh, onions and broccoli. You can plant those as companion plants. I've never had any luck with broccoli and guess what? I've got broccoli coming up in my, my pot out there that I've got it planted in my planter with my onions. So I'm super, super excited about that. And I'm jumping on board with grow big TVs, hashtag grow big 24. And I, I forget all the different seeds, but it's uh, the mammoth sunflower seeds, Peter peppers and a, a special tomato plant. So I'm going to jump on board with those. So that some of those will be new to me also. Yeah, I may jump on board with a couple of those. Uh, I know I do have the tomato and they are up. So <laughs> Heather said her favorite veggie is salsa. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, Joe, I did send you an email with my address. I hope you received that. Um I do have a lot of mammoth sunflower seeds, y'all. A couple of years ago, we we grew some uh, different sunflowers out in our garden area. They did really well. The garden did not. <laughs> <laughs> so what I did instead of feeding them to the chickens is I put the seed back. We're actually going to dig up a huge plot and we're going to plant the mammoths with all the other varieties of sunflowers in there um, and have it at one end of our garden to kind of attract the birds in. Believe it or not, you do want birds in your garden because they eat right. bugs. Um, they may peck at some of your fruits and vegetables, but you know, hey, they only peck a little bit. <laughs> now they'll probably go after my blackberries because my blackberry oh, yeah. are doing really well this year. <laughs> Last year, the blackberries didn't do well whatsoever here. It got hot and dry so fast. So hopefully this year, I'm hoping we get more blackberries. So P and J and says, gooseberries. Yeah, so, P and, and J. I am. I dug up. Well, yeah, I dug up some wild gooseberries. I'm gonna plant in our in my garden area as awesome. well. So P and J Homestead said they just finished a batch of hot sauce and now they're sitting. Listen, when you're doing that hot sauce, you are going to be crying because you're breathing in all those fumes. But I tell you what, it is a wonderful product to have on your shelves. Homemade hot sauce. And let me oh, tell yes. you, my family loves it. I started out years ago just doing, you know, the hot peppers in the vinegar. We called it pepper sauce. That's what they call it in the South. Um, and my 
my son and loves are both from Mexico and they love hot peppers, but they had never had them pickled like that. And they just absolutely go gaga and will eat a whole jar of them in one sitting if I let them. Uh, and then I got into making hot sauce and I love the hot sauce and I'm hoping to do a lot more of that this year. My salsa is getting low in my pantry, so I'm probably going to be doing a salsa uh, video soon as all that stuff comes in. Yeah. Now, zucchini is one of my favorites also because it's such a versatile vegetable. Oh, yeah. I, I came across the recipe using zucchini, like zucchini pickles. I've made them before. I'm not a big fan of them, but you can make zucchini pickles. And there is, um, oh, fake mock pineapple using zucchini as well. Yeah, uh, zucchini is really good. You can do a lot of mock um, recipes, recipes with, your, with zucchini. Yeah, with the zucchini and your tomatoes. Yes, I've got some mock jams in there that's made with green tomatoes. Yeah, I do too. I do too. So I do too. So I yeah. that was where I started was in canning was the jellies. So yeah, jellies was next. Um, and of course, those are water bath. And then when you get into your vegetables that they need to be pressure canned unless right. they're pickled. And a lot of people will pickle the vegetables just so they don't have to pressure can. Yeah. Well, my mom, I don't remember my mom or my grandparents ever pressure canning. So this is something new for me, but it's opened up a whole new world of canning different things. So. Yeah, and I love going into my pantry and seeing all the beautiful jars lined up and it, I can go grocery shopping at home and I don't have to go to the store near as much. We still go occasionally, but not as near near as much as we used to. Um, so there, those big name brand grocery stores are not getting our hard earned dollars at all. Right. I get to the farm. Welcome in. Right. And I, I noticed last year on looking the back of the cans of the fruit um, that a lot of the, your canned goods isn't made here in America anymore. It's made from somewhere else. So, yeah. And they're adding all kinds of stuff in your canned goods yep. and your dry goods in the stores that is not healthy for you. Uh, they're putting all kinds of preservatives in there. A lot of synthetic uh vitamins and minerals that they mention on the back are synthetic they're not real so you right. want to you want to buy your heirloom vegetables and grow them and collect your seed each and every year hey simply jan right. homestead welcome in i don't know if y'all saw it or not on the news but um the plastics like plastic wrap and your your ziploc bags and stuff like that the government has decided that they are no longer safe for us to use because they contain forever pfas in them isn't that exciting to know we've been using right. those for how many years <laughs> they're just now getting to yeah, this for a long time and some of the newer products yeah. that you think are safe, like your bamboo, paper plates, cups, and plastic silverware also contains PFAS plastics. So you have to be careful yeah. not to uh, use those products. So we don't buy paper products in our home anyway. Um, we try to avoid as many paper products like that as possible. I'd rather wash dishes and know that I have presented food on a safe dish than to go out and buy plastic ware and paper plates and toss them into the landfill. I'd rather wash them. Yeah. The, the only, the only time biggest part of the time that we use paper plates is during our church when we have dinner. So, which is yeah, at least once a month. So sometimes yeah. more than once. Yeah. So some places you have no choice. And if right. you go out to eat a lot, you're going to be eating out of a lot of paper plates with plastic wear. Right. And 
Uh, even the styrofoam cups are not healthy for us. And we put hot right. liquids in them. So y'all be very aware of what you're eating out of as well as what you're putting into your bodies. Uh, plastic yeah. is showing up in places that it's never been before. Right. The oceans are filled with plastic particles. Our soil is being filled with plastic particles. We're planting in plastic still, you know, we don't have a choice, but I'd rather be uh, using clay pots or something other than plastic to plant my garden in. Uh, right. we, we purchased, um, I forget how many fire rings one year for Rural King. They had them on sale. And I think my husband went a little crazy and, and bought all these fire rings, but they make the great, great planters and they were cheap uh, and they're galvanized. So at right. least we're, we're planting in something that's not going to harm our plants. Um, so we have to think before we buy these days. I can't stress it enough. I keep telling everybody, um, you know, know exactly what you're putting into your bodies. This is why we can. We know what is in our tomato sauce. We know what's in our spaghetti sauce. We know what's in our barbecue sauce. Um, we know what is in our vegetables and our fruits. That, that's why I feel that's why a lot more people are gardening than ever before. And they're learning how to can and all that. So, yeah, we're bringing back our grandmothers and mothers traditional kitchen duties and I'm one of those people that is in my kitchen at least 75%, if not more of my day, I'm in that kitchen doing something to right. preserve something for my family. Um, right. Being a housewife as per se was the old term for it uh, is actually not a grandiose idea. People don't like that idea. They don't like housekeeping. Um, we've gotten away from a lot of things that were, done when my mother was coming up and my aunts and all we've gotten away from a lot of that because women work outside the home but if you're a woman that's working inside your home for your family and you're depending on a one income you want to do as much as you can to help your husband provide for your family right that means right. gardening canning dehydrating and storing up your dry goods as much food as possible and providing as much food as possible because that's less money that you have to go to the store and that money can be used elsewhere and if you buy if you're buying a pack of seeds say they cost two dollars and 99 cents but it says on there that they're organic heirloom make sure you're saving seeds from that because right. you Next year, you won't be spending $2.99. You'll already have your seeds, so they're free. Right. Um, I actually have seeds in my freezer that came from Mr. Williams, uh, who was a man from our church. Him and his wife got married, and it was 75 years, the year that I received his seeds. Uh, wow. They were a wedding gift to them, a pack of seeds. Wow. 75 years and he has grown them every year and collected the seeds every year. So I know that they are organic heirloom seeds. I don't know the variety, but I know that they're organic and heirloom. So I just call them Mr. Williams green beans. And these are 12 foot vining green beans. Wow. Amazing. Um, and I also was able to find my purple pod pole beans that my aunt grew down in Mississippi. Um, I found them online. Somebody actually told me in one of my chats what the name of the beans were because I've been looking for them for years and couldn't find any in my area. All I could find was the bush beans that were purple or the green beans that were pole beans. Right. So I, I ordered two packs online and I'm super, super excited. I want to get those planted because I love those green beans. They turn green when you cook them. And yeah, they have, I, I have some of those. I uh, found some, so. Yeah, but they they're were, not purple. These are uh, purple, let's see, Louisiana purple pod green beans. 
and they are the best tasting green beans I have ever put my mouth in, into my mouth. And I love green beans. So, um, yeah, Mr. Williams was a great guy. He would open up his garden every year. Wow. He was, he was 89 years old when he passed away. He caught the dreaded Cavobo, went to the hospital, walked into the hospital because he was having a little bit of breathing di difficulty. They gave him a jab of medication that they gave me in the hospital. Well, it sent him into immediate heart attack and killed him. Wow. Uh, it damaged my heart valves. But I had told the doctor because I had already known about Mr. Williams passing from this medication. And they said, well, this is the only thing we can offer you. And I said, if you give me that drug, I'm letting you know I am not signing any documentations. And if it says in there anywhere that uh, you're not liable, I'm marking through it and I'm putting my initials on it. You will be liable for my death. Yeah. Yeah. And he just kind of pulled back and looked at me with his mouth hanging open. And I said, I'm not playing. So they had me on it for four days and then they yanked me off of it because they realized there was something wrong. And I went immediately to my heart doctor and he did an immediate heart cath and found the, the damage. So yeah. it was there. I, I got an uncle that is heart having heart problems now. He did get the the juice and he's he's now having heart problems but get this they dismissed him from the hospital and they're going to do and check for blockages as an outpatient instead of doing it while he was in the hospital right and i'm like that's just crazy it used to be they would check if they thought you had a blockage that they would check it while you're in the hospital but no they're going to do it outpatient on him yeah, because so. it is socialized medicine now. Y'all, we are in socialized medicine. Um, yeah. I, I'm having trouble. I talked to Gail this morning a little bit in text message and told her what I was going through. I'm on, I'm taking Manjaro for my diabetes. They switched me off Ozempic to this, and she upped my dose. Well, lo and behold, no pharmacy in our area can get those shots. They're wow. not able to get any shots from a lot of the diabetic medicines. So uh, we were going to mail order it. And the company that we mail order to said that they didn't receive the, the message or the prescription, which I know they did. So I've been off of this medicine for two weeks. I called my pharmacy and I asked them, I said, well, do you have the lower dosage? Yes. So I called my doctor back. I said, they have the lower dosage. Order me three months worth. So my husband's picking that up today, but I've been off of it for two weeks, y'all. Wow. And that scares me because diabetes is nothing to play with. No, it's not. It's not. Definitely not. Definitely not. So I know I, I'm having issues with getting my mom help. She didn't take the juice, but she took extra strength um shot a couple a few years ago and it's hard to get the, her to get any help for anything so exactly and it's getting harder and yeah we're, we need to be looking more at, at what we can grow medicinally uh or what is growing in our yard already that we don't know that's medicinal um get to the farm says graham had a kidney infection tested positive for and the and the no no was whisked away to solitary confinement. She was released to us for hospice. That's so sad. And Milk and Honey Heritage said she had a blood clot in a long in my long long ago from a car accident. So glad I held off on getting it. Yeah, uh, I I didn't take the you know what I I had a reaction to the flu shot many years ago. So I didn't take it, but they, they kept trying to force me to take it. I changed doctors. I told them, I said, if you come in my office one more time, you will not see me again as a patient. And I meant it. And yep. we need to all do that. I know I'm getting a little political here, but we need to all do that to protect our bodies because this is a temple of God for me. I am not putting anything in my body that 
I believe goes against what God wants me to have. Right. So um, the blood clots, I have a fast clotting disorder. I don't know if it's hereditary or not, um, but they discovered that when I threw blood clots through my heart into my lungs. And wow. it's just a, a miracle that I did not die from it going into my heart or my lungs. Right. Uh, and it was multiple. It wasn't just one. That's why they knew there was a clotting disorder going on. So I was on, um, what was that? Blood thinner years ago. I can't remember the name of it, but it's a rat. Warf poison. Warfarin. Yeah, warfarin. Uh, yeah. It's a rat poison. They feed it to rats, y'all. And they feed yeah. it to us to stop the blood clots. Well, I know I'm supposed to be on that, but I, I, you know, they gave me a blood pressure medicine and some medicines I have bad reaction to. And so I don't, I do not take it. So, so there's other I found, things you can take to help with that. So, yeah, serapeptase is all natural. Um, I think ginger, ginger is another yeah. one you can take to help. And there's several things you can take to help stop the blood clots. Um, Ann and Christy were talking about rheumatic fever. Um, Christy's sister had it as a child and developed a heart murmur from it. And Ann Haynes' brother died at age 14 because of complications of having it. These diseases are real, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, but, you know, a lot of these diseases are also man-made. Agreed. And, and anyway, a lot of the diseases are coming in from our borders. Yes. Uh, but also a lot of our diseases are coming from our food sources and the yep. grocery stores. Yeah. Brand brand names. Um, I'm not going to mention brand names and store names, store brand names have so many ingredients in it that are harmful to us. And yet the three letter government agency continues to approve those to be sold and consumed in the United States. And many of these products that we are eating here in the United States are banned in foreign countries. Yep. So yep. I take that into consideration. Yeah, Jan, I don't have trust with the medical professionals anymore. Oh, oh I don't either. I, I am seeing a um, nurse practitioner. I do trust her to a point, but I will tell her no in a heartbeat and I will tell her why. She knows that I am seeking alternates to my medical health. So she's following that. She's very open to finding out if things are working for me or not. So she can tell her other patients. So some of them are listening. Uh, others are not and i have left i left my heart doctor i left my endocrinologist my endocrinologist held my consultation in the open because i wouldn't wear this over my face yep which violated my HIPAA rights all over the place and you know but yet when we had kobobo that went out the window because every where you went have you been out of the United States? Have you have you uh, tested positive? Uh, have you this? Have you that? And why haven't you got a mask on? And I'm like, you're violating my HIPAA rights. You're not a medical professional. You don't yeah. have the right to ask me these questions. And I would say this even in a hospital. And I told them that. I said, you don't have the right to even ask me those questions, let alone force me to wear something I don't want to put on my body. Right. And y'all, whether you believe it or not, this thing over the face is a sign of slavery. Go read the book of Genesis. When, yep. when the woman was being presented and other men came up, she covered her face because she was considered a slave at that point. Or yep. she considered, you know, she was property. So we were being hedgehogged into becoming slaves again. Um, there's a lot of things I don't agree with that's going on in this world. And I don't talk about it a lot here on this channel because some of it may get me demonetized yeah. or, or removed. But um, 
it all goes back to what we're consuming. We can, if we consume TV all day, we're really not learning anything. We're just mindlessly watching crapola. Um, and everything has been programmed for us, literally. Right. And they're trying to control us. They've done it in other countries and they think they're going to be able to do it here in the States and in other big countries. Um, so y'all just be aware when you're out there purchasing things, look at those labels, look and see what it says. White sugar has been bleached. Yep. Natural sugar is actually healthier for you because it's all natural. It's got a tan color. It's natural. Um, your rice, look at the back of the packages of rice. If it doesn't say rice as the only ingredient in there, don't buy it. I'm telling you, do not buy it because you are feeding your family garbage. They have found plastic in the rice packages. Can you imagine feeding your family rice with plastic? I mean, just crazy stuff. Yeah, the diseases, um, I have autoimmune diseases, and I know that a lot of my autoimmune diseases are caused from the food consumption of years of yep. not really paying attention to the labels of yep. what we were eating. Uh, food that is marked organic is not organic. If it just says organic on there, it's 80% organic and then it's 20% whatever else they decided to add into that food. Yep. It could, be, it, could be sprayed, it could have been sprayed with pesticides. It could have been, uh, had some genetic modifications done after it came in from the fields. We don't know. Um, look at things that say flavors. We don't know what flavors mean because yep. it's synthetically made flavors. Um, but it's not just our food. We can get environmental, uh, causes for our autoimmune diseases as well, because again, I live next to fields that are being sprayed. Uh, yeah, I do too. Thankfully our farmer is very conscientious and he will not spray on a windy day. Um, uh, because he knows that I have autoimmune diseases and, that I'm trying to raise organic foods as much as possible. So, um, yeah. <laughs> off grid homestead <laughs> peeking at your page now. <laughs> I, I know the farmer that lives, you know, there's hay fields and cattle fields all around, all around us. And he does spray for the wild roses and stuff like that. And the wild blackberries. And I'm like, that's food. <laughs> Yeah. So that's what uh, happened to my plum tree. Yeah. I told my husband, I said, I would rather die than go back to the hospital. Oh, yeah. I didn't want, I didn't want to go when I had Kabobo. I had Kabobo pneumonia and I did not want to go, but my oxygen levels had dropped into the eighties. Uh, I think it was actually the lower eighties and my, daughters and my husband says, no, you're going to the hospital. Um, I was fighting it, but my body was not able to come out of it because I also have asthma and I have a long history of lung diseases. So what am I doing for that? I'm taking raw red honey and raw, uh, I'm sorry, raw red onion and raw local honey get this right because I'm mixing the two up. Slice your onion up, put it in a quart size jar, a wide mouth is best, pour your raw honey on it, let it ferment on your counters overnight, and then you can um, put it in the refrigerator, but you can immediately start taking that because Q-certain in the red onion uh, helps your lungs fight off infections uh, viruses can't stick and you will start expelling all the uh, that phlegm and stuff that you don't want in your body uh, and i take that faithfully twice a day 
I take a tablespoon in the morning at night. Uh, after about a month, when the onions are translucent, I will strain it off, put it back in the refrigerator, and I can cook with those onions. It doesn't go to waste or, you know, right. I can use them in something else. Um, and it works for me. I also take elderberry syrup faithfully every day. I take zinc every day. I take vitamin C and vitamin D3 every day. And that has helped me with my autoimmune disorders and it's helped me with my immune system where I have been exposed several times to Kabobo and not gotten it. So I'm thinking, you know, if we pay more attention to the medicinal part of our foods, we're going to be able to um, improve our health. And that makes more sense to me than going to the hospital and going through all this. And if I had known this 10 years ago, what I know today, I probably be in a much healthier place than I am right now. Yeah. Well, I know here here locally, you go to the hospital, you might as well decide, you might as well just set up housekeeping there because they will in the waiting room and the ER waiting room, it will take anywhere from six to thirty hours in order for you to be seen. Because I've been there with my mom several times, which they just brush her off. So yeah. And see, you know, unfortunately, we've had family members die. Uh, yep. my, my husband's sister died of cancer at 42. Uh, her mother died young from diabetes, complications of diabetes. Um, and the food, a lot of these food additives that they're adding are addictive to us. Yep. And so we, we crave them. Uh, candy is probably number one. Uh, sweet tea. Have you ever craved sweet tea? Yes. Uh, hey, Nancy with our treasured home. She's going to actually be a guest of mine. I think it's next week. So y'all need to be looking forward to seeing Nancy on here. And Rudy, welcome in Rudy. So, um, uh, if we avoid purchasing foods from our store, we're sending a strong message to their suppliers. We're not buying your junk anymore. Right. And we're seeing stores closing down because of it, because more and more people are catching on to this. And it just irks me to walk into a store and see somebody walking by with a cart full of junk food. You know, I just want to grab them right. and shake them and say, are you really seriously going to put that into your body? Because I know for a fact what it's going to do to your body. Um, but we can't do that. You know, it's just not polite manners to go up to a stranger and start shaking them. <laughs> we might come across as a little bit crazy, but we can do it for our families. Uh, we can begin to make our own food choices and decisions of what we're going to eat. Um, pierogies with hot sauce is your addiction, Joe. Okay. <laughs> I like pierogies. They're good. Um, yeah. But that cookbook, uh, the Fanny Farmer cookbook, I think me and Luann are, are going to do a open collaboration on recipes out of that. Yeah. Um, and we'll get that started and we'll do that till the end of the year. That will be fun. And y'all can learn to cook from scratch. Cooking from scratch is key when you're a homesteader. You don't, want to go, sure. you don't want to go buy the convenience foods at the store if you don't have to. You can make your own convenience foods at home. I have uh, my own version of a hamburger helper in a jar. It's a meal in a jar. Um, yep. I make my own seasoning mix. And that was another one. Your seasonings that you're buying at the store are not pure. You need to find you a pure source for organic seasoning. Um, I found that out as well. Plus, they're putting in plastic, and anything that plastic touches is leaching into your food. Yeah. there There's a local store. Well, there's two local stores here, uh, Mama Jeans, and then there's a discount grocery that is also, they do sell your bulk type spices that I trust so yeah 
So Fanny Farmer, I think there are some of her recipes online. I'll have to double check. Um, there may be some archived books of Fanny Farmer because this yep. cookbook has been around for a long, long time. I think 1830 something. Yeah, or, this one was 1896 that I picked up. Yeah. Uh, like, oh, okay. You know, when I yeah. picked it up, I didn't know Fanny Pro about Fanny Farmer. And I looked, and I'm like, oh, okay. I like the cookbooks. The older, the better, because they have more uh, food from scratch. Yeah. Recipes from scratch. So. And I have over 200 recipe books, and a lot of them have modern recipes in there. Open a can of this, open a can of that, and put it in the pot. Well, we're not going to do all of that. We're going to do it from scratch and show y'all a healthier way to eat. Now, my grandmother cooked that way and she lived into her 90s, her and her husband both. And um, a matter of fact, she didn't really stop doing a lot of the cooking until around the mid 1970s when they moved her in from their log cabin into the city and they didn't have the resources that they had on the farm. Right. So that may have shortened her lifespan. She might have lived to be 100 if she had not been a, had to go to the store to purchase groceries as much. Yes, Heather, I do have a lot of cookbooks. That is my <laughs> uh, obsession in getting different cookbooks and recipes for sure. I have over so. 200 recipe books, y'all. 200. Yeah, I probably have that many too. I know there's there's a recipe uh, book I've been trying to find. Um, that I know I have one. Uh, it has nothing but egg recipes. You want up your buddy. We're getting plenty of eggs. Come on. Up. Up. Come on. He has trouble jumping. So. I got you. I'm not going to let you go. <laughs> <laughs> That's my grumpy man. <laughs> okay. That's Roscoe, y'all. He's a Jack Russell Terrier. He is a rescue. He was thrown out of a moving vehicle um, down in Bahia, Mississippi as a puppy. He only weighed four and a half pounds when I got him. He He's now a good, healthy 10-pound Jack Russell, but he's got some problems from you know them throwing them out of a moving vehicle um but we we do love our fur babies oh yes they get natural food too and um I, i'm going to start making some of their treats and maybe some dog food in the future that's yeah, something I, I to do with. another youtuber they made um broth for their dogs and i'm gonna yeah. try doing that so where you take, yeah. instead of after you make your homemade broth from your bones, well, you keep going until the bones are brittle and make your own bone meal for your garden. And then that extra broth that you're making, you also make it for your dogs. And give well, that's a good dogs. idea. And, you know, it's waste not, want not. Y'all remember that? Yes, uh, yes. Our, we don't our grandmothers and... Oh, parents as well. I mean, they used everything on, you know, they was taught to use every last drop of everything. So welcome we in gardening with Caitlin. That. Welcome in gardening with Caitlin. Writing your name down. <laughs> yeah, my grandmother quilted. She was legally blind by the time before she passed away. But I remember sitting, she sat in a rocking chair and she had all these different colored blocks and she would make around the world quilt tops. And then my aunts would take the quilt tops and quilt them for her. Uh, but she was legally blind. So they cut out all the pieces and they put them in the order, the color orders that she wanted. And she knew which pile to go to for the next row. And she made some of the prettiest quilts out of all their old clothing uh, nothing went to waste. Um, but nothing. Both, of my, both of my grandparents quilt. My mom quilts. Um, I remember the one grandmother, she couldn't see very well, you know, unless it was light. And she had one of those old uh, treadmill sewing machines. 
and towards the end she would st she had to stop sewing because she had one the thruddle went the needle went through her finger oh so yeah that would be an owie <laughs> Yeah, and she, I mean, she kept hand sewing, but, you know, I know I, when something happens to my mom, I will have a lot of quilt tops to go through because she makes them and then um, she don't do anything with them a lot at some, sometimes, so. Right. So, yeah, you save your bones for broth uh, and then cook yep. them down to the, to the broth stage, then you add some more water to them, continue to cook them until the bones become brittle. Yep. Save that broth for your pets. And then you grind, draw those bones out and grind them up. And yep. you can use them to as bone meal in your meal. garden. Yeah. Which Same bone meal is good for your irises. That's how you feed your irises every spring. So that's good You're to know. To do anyway. <laughs> My irises need to be divided out. I'm, I'm very, very behind. I hope I get some blooms this year. Um, Mine are already blooming. So, yeah, we feed, ones, so. We, feed our, we feed our eggshells back to our chickens. Um, and I need to start saving some and grind them up for the garden as well because you can use them in the garden. And you can use them on dog food if it's ground fine enough. Uh, it feeds calcium to your your dogs. So, I didn't know that about the eggshells. So. Yeah. Yeah. Homemade chicken bone broth. She says I saved myself during flu and the animals with homemade chicken bone broth. Absolutely. Yep. yep. And I save all the scraps. Y'all saw my bit my vegetable scrap uh, broth that I made. Save those. I just save them in the bag until it gets full. Um, yep. But I told my husband, I'm, I'm going to start making uh, wax wraps. It's fabric with beeswax and you can use them over your bowls. I use, I have some here. I use them. Uh, I really like them better than using plastic wrap anyway. And I told him, I said, and you, they, when they wear down, you just reapply your wax mixture to it and you can continue to use those. You can wrap sandwiches in them. You can wrap your vegetables in them. Uh, I wouldn't use them in the freezer so much. I'd use freezer paper, I think, in the freezer. Replace those plas that plastic as much as you can in your home. I actually started going through my kitchen and got rid of a lot of the plastics, including cutting boards. And I'm also getting rid of the silicone um, things that are not healthy for you either because they discovered that is giving people cancer. So, Ooh. yeah. So I'm getting rid of silicone molds and all that stuff out of my kitchen. Uh, we're not going to get rid of all of it by any means, but we can get rid of a lot of it and save ourselves. Yeah, it helps uh, the... Chicken bone broth helps boost animals' immune system. Uh, it cured five cats from the cat flu. That's awesome, Ann. That is awesome. Yeah, I've got a lot of bags of broth in my freezer as well. I even saved a ham broth off our hams. Uh, it will make a wonderful base for a ham-based soup. I've got to do some bean canning, and so that will be something to use in my beans. And I'm looking forward to getting all of that done. Just finding the time to get it done is the question. My husband's like, yeah. when are you going to cook this? When are you going to cook that? And I'm like, well, baby, I've got a whole list of foods that I've got to go through in my freezer first. <laughs> but um, we just finished our, thank our Thanksgiving, our Easter meal. And right. we ate ham for two days. And my husband's like, I don't want to see another piece of ham. So I stuck that in the freezer bag. We're going to turn it into beans because uh, I put ham in my beans or bacon or, you know, whatever I can get goes into my beans. So that's what we're going to use. Y'all check your meat markets. Um, find you a, a farm, a ranch that those cattle or hogs 
and talk to them and see if you can't get meat from them uh, right. that is organic because the stuff they're putting in your meats is health not healthy for you either. They're putting nitrates in your bacon and anything like that, lunch meats and stuff. Uh, I'm going to learn how to make my own lunch meats. That's going to be an upcoming video. Uh, it's making my own lunch meats because my husband loves lunch meat. So we're going to be doing a lot of stuff around the Hillbilly Chicken Ranch. And Miss Lou Ann, I know she's always busy doing something around her place. Oh, yeah. Always busy. So keeps me out of trouble. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it keeps me from killing people. <laughs> <laughs> that's what i used to say when i do my crochet you know i'd be out in public and i'm crocheting away <coughs> oh you're you're yarning or you're knitting no it's not knitting knitting it is crochet right and no i'm not yarning <laughs> i don't know no. how to yarn <laughs> i can tell a yarn <laughs> but anyway it keeps me from killing people <laughs> Oh, Christy, you got to get blood work done. Oh, my goodness. I only had blood work done yesterday. Um, I want to finish out my my chapter real quick. If you don't mind, Luann, tolerating yeah. me reading. Um, we've been in Matthew 24, and I was going to do it last week. And, of course, we had Kevin and Heather on, and I felt it was just as important to have them talk. So we, we stopped at verse... 15 um but i'm going to read verse 15 again and i'm going to go um to verse 27 we'll stop there or did i read that already let me go back and look at my book uh we did through 27 so i'm going to start in verse 28 we'll get this right and I'm going to go through the end of the chapter, which is verse 51. So this is out of the King James Version, Matthew 24. And this is um, Jesus on the Mount of Olives, his dissertation that he gave to the disciples and those that were listening. And it's about the end times. For wheresoever the carcass is, there will be eagles. There will the eagles be gathered together. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of heaven shall be shaken. And then shall appear the sign of the son of man in heaven. Then shall the tribes of the earth mourn. They shall see the son of man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet. And they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of the heaven to the other. Now learn the parable, parable of the fig tree. When his branch is yet tender and putteth forth leaves, ye know that the summer is nigh. So likewise ye, when ye shall see all these things, ye will know that it is near even at the doors. Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass till these things are fulfilled. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. But of the day and hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but only my Father only. But as the, as the days of Noah war, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking and marrying and giving in marriage until the day of Noah that Noah entered into the ark. And know not until the flood came and took them away, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Then shall two be in the field, and one be one shall be taken and the other left. Two women shall be grinding at the mill, and one shall be taken and the other left. Watch therefore. Ye know not the hour your Lord cometh, but know this, that if the good man of the house had known in what, in what watch the thief would come, he would have watched and would not have suffered in his house to be broken. 
to, to be broken up. Therefore, be you also ready for such an hour as ye think not the Son of Man cometh. When, who, when, uh, see, who then is faithful and wise, sir? Who, I'm sorry, who then is a faithful and wise servant whom his Lord hath made ruler over the household to give them meat in due season? Blessed is the servant whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find him doing, him so doing. Verily I say unto you, that you shall make him a ruler of, over all your goods. I need a breather. <laughs> but, and if an evil servant shall say into his heart, the Lord, my Lord delayeth his coming and shall begin to smite his fellow servants and to eat and drink with the drunken, the Lord of the servants shall come in a day when he looketh not for him and in an hour when he is not aware of and shall cut him asunder and appoint him his portion with the hypocrites. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. That concludes the chapter. What we have read is about the second coming. Uh, we read about Israel becoming a nation again in 1948. We are reading about what is going to happen during the tribulation. These are Jesus' words, and the dissertation goes on into chapter 25 and 26. Or I think it ends in 26. So, I mean, Jesus had a lot of information for us. We don't know the day or the hour. We have signs that we can look for that he is giving us in this dissertation. We know that everything that Jesus says in these verses has been talked about from the beginning of Genesis all the way through the book of Revelation. And yes, uh, it is going to happen. We have to be really aware of what is going to happen. But the main thing for us as Christians is to be looking for the appearance of Jesus and to continue to share the gospel with anybody that will listen because time is growing short. And people are lost in this world and we need those lost people to come to Christ. So don't be afraid to share the gospel with anybody that will listen. Ladies, we know the churches are full of false pastors. We know the churches are full of deacons that don't even read their Bibles anymore. So don't be afraid to be a voice in the wilderness along with the men. Um, we need the truth getting out there. And the best way to get the truth out there is to read directly from the Word of God. Well, if you have any prayer requests, you can drop them now. I'm not going to keep Miss Luann much longer, but I have really, really enjoyed you, Miss Luann, and you are welcome to come back anytime you like. You just let me know the date, and I will get you okay. on my calendar. And I have enjoyed so much talking with you today. I have enjoyed it as well. It's been a blessing. It really, it really is a blessing. I enjoy getting to know uh, you one-on-one. -on -one. Um, I'd like to know even more about you because you are such an interesting lady. You have so much knowledge to give us and we all learn from one another. Um, I can't explain. I express it enough. I really enjoy watching your channel. Well, thank yep. you. I enjoy watching your channel. I think we all can learn from each other. Yep. Gail is asking for us to pray for her youngest daughter. So we will do that. Yeah. Uh, we'll my oldest daughter. Pray, pray for our daughters. How about we pray for our sons and daughters? How's that? Yes. yes. Because I know that I have needs in my family as well. And so many other ones out there are not saved in our families and that just hurts us to the core. Yeah. All We're gonna, lost and unsaved for sure. Yeah. Um, I pray daily for the lost of the world. I pray for the lost Jews. I pray for the lost Muslims and I pray for all of our lost in our cities and towns. 
And God will use us if we allow him to. Okay, Charles, uh, a fallen veteran fallen. has progressive cancer. Let me get this written down. Wow. Gales. Amen to that, Christy. Uh, continue to pray for Barb. I know she's had some health issues as well. Um, LB's mom, uh, Gail's mother-in-law. There's just a whole list of people. I'm not going to go into all of them, but the Lord knows all of those that have prayer requests. I know Rudy has some, had prayer requests for his brother and his dad in the past. Alfonso's had prayer requests for his family and situations. So, um, we're just going to go ahead and pray and then we're going to end our live and we thank each and every one of you for coming along for this. We have really enjoyed you being here and thank you again, Miss Luann. I love you to pieces. Thank you very much for having me. Dear Heavenly Father, we just come to you today with all of these prayer requests for our children, Father, girls and boys, our relatives, our our um, aunts, uncles, cousins, and friends, Father, that they might know Jesus. Father, send them dreams and visions of Jesus. Let them see our actions so that they will come to know you, Father, through us, because it is ultimately Jesus that, that they should be seeing and not us. Thank you for our friends that's come through the live today. Father, I ask you to bless each and every channel here as they go about their week, Father, and just bring joy and peace and happiness to them. Thank you for Miss Luann for her willingness to come and be a special guest today, Father. We ask you to bless her as well. Bless her channels, Father, with growth because she has so much knowledge, Father, to offer to us. Father, it is your will that we are seeking, Father, whether it be through our food, um, through our actions, Father. Build a healthy community, Father, through our efforts. Help us with our gardens as they grow, Father, and let it be an abundant harvest for each and every one of us. Let all our past struggles be past and our future struggles be small. Thank you for all you have done, are doing, and will continue to do. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. Amen. Thank you, everybody, for coming in. We love you to pieces. We love you, love you, love you. I love you. Miss Luann loves you, but Jesus loves you more. Amen to that. Hey, Papa Smurf. I've been wondering where my Papa Smurf was at. Let me get your name written down before we close out. Uh, I'm also going to ask y'all to pray for Tarsha with Triple Threat Firearms and Defense. I haven't seen her online in a while, and I'm a little bit concerned. She, I reached out to her about a month ago, and she never responded back. Um, so y'all be praying for her and that she'll jump back on YouTube and do some gardening or something on her channel because we love Miss Tarsha. And for other channels that are missing in action as well, and I just be praying over each other's channels because we all need that prayer covering. Be blessed, everybody.